Well, we're now talking about centripetal force. Okay, so this is our next topic. If you remember last time, we were talking about um, both the tangential accelerations, tangential speeds, and then we started to look at how that, that tangential speed is the constant as long as it's moving in a circle, we're always changing direction. And so that changing direction causes an acceleration, and we call that the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so we're now looking at, well, if we have an acceleration, there must be a force. And so what do we call that force? We call it the centripetal force. Okay. So let's go back to where we're talking about things that we know. Okay, remember we uh, know that Newton talked about um, in his second law that if there's an acceleration present then you have a net force okay and so we had our relationship F equals MA and so we looked at all of the different forces that we had and if we had um, any kind of an acceleration present it was the sum of those forces was equal to a net force so the net force was equal to a mass times an acceleration okay so we did a lot of work where we looked at free body diagrams and then we took those forces and we tried to figure out if we had a one arrow bigger than the other arrow and that that bigger arrow was, then that was the net force, okay? Well, we're back to doing that kind of same look at free body diagrams and where is the force acting that's keeping us now in motion in a rotational pattern, okay? So here we have our hammer thrower, our hammer thrower spinning it around in the circle. And so we know that there has to be a tensional force, okay? So in other words, there's a mass or an F of G that hangs down and then there's this force of tension that's going there. Well, the force of tension it falls in line with the plane of the rotation so the tension force is essentially equal to that centripetal force that we're looking at. Okay, and So that's kind of how we look at these things. And we're going to go through several, several different problems. But I want to just again highlight a couple of things. So we know what Newton was saying. He said that if there is an acceleration present, then there's a net force that's causing that, okay? So we looked at net forces. That's the same thing that we're going to talk about here, okay? Um, the net force then is caused by our centripetal acceleration. And centripetal force is nothing more than a net force that causes the rotation motion, okay? The net force that causes the rotation motion. So that's what our centripetal force is. And because it's a net force, we never draw the centripetal force as part of the free body diagram. It's just not going to be part of the free body diagram. It's the result of the net of all of this, okay? So that's kind of our, our look at things. Let's, let's walk through some example problems because I know that this is the one where I think there's like 30, 30 of the problems deal with you know, looking at forces, looking at centripetal forces and how things are doing in the rotation. So, my first example is this. I've got a horizontal ball on a string. It's kind of like what we were doing the other day where we were swinging the stoppers around on the string and so we looked at that and we said, well, there's an acceleration in there. That acceleration is causing tension, so there's a tension force. So let's see what we've got here, okay? So I've got a ball that's on a string connected to his hand and we not want to figure out how much force um, is this person going to exert on the string that's attached to this ball and it makes a radius of 0.6 meters and the ball travels in two revolutions per second, okay? Now, oh, I want to back up one second here. Um, because we're looking at um, force that we're going to call centripetal, we should talk about it in terms of it is it is nothing more than a mass times an acceleration. Um, but our, our centripetal acceleration, if you remember, can be written two ways. That tangential speed over the radius, okay, that's what centripetal acceleration is. Or it's the mass times the other way that we had it which was our omega, our angular squared. Okay, so again, this just represented centripetal acceleration. Okay, I apologize that I didn't get the formula put up there. But again, this is how we look at centripetal force. And remember that this is nothing more than a net force. Okay, not part of a free body diagram. Okay, so now I'm back to this point right here. I'm looking at this. 
So if I'm free body diagramming the ball, okay? So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put this as my point that represents the ball. The ball has a um, weight and then there's a force of tension in the string, okay? It's the force of tension that is essentially going to be equal to how much force the person's going to um, supply in order to keep things spinning around. So our net force, okay, our net force or our centripetal force is equivalent to our um, force of tension, okay? So that's kind of our key thing as we look at this. The tensional force is equal to the centripetal force, okay? Because the centripetal force is like a net force, okay? We always used to put, and then we would replace the net force with MA. In this case, we're gonna replace our force with one of our two formulas, either uh, M uh, times the tangential speed squared divided by the radius, or M times R times angular speed squared. Um, so our force of tension is going to be equal to, now, I'm going to look at this and I say, I know revolutions per second. Now, I can look at this in kind of two different ways. I, in fact, I'm going to take my revolutions and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to do a little top-down point here. Here's my 0.6 meters, and so then it goes around. And so I make one revolution, I make two revolutions, and this all happens in one second. Okay, if I wanted to just figure this out for, a, say, a, a V of T, I want something in meters. Well, I'm just going to look at this then in terms of how much distance did I cover in two revolutions. So, in other words, I'm going to take my 2 pi R, that's how I figure out my circumference of the circle, That's, and then I'm going to times that by 2, okay, and divide that by one second, and that gives me my rotation, okay, my, my how much speed I have, because I'm swinging this at a pretty constant rate. Okay, so I'm gonna figure that out. Grabbing my calculator. Uh, two times pi times uh, my radius, 0.6 times two for the number of revolutions, so I end up getting 7.54 meters per second. Now that's my V sub T, okay, my tangential speed. So I'm going to say the centripetal force is the mass uh, times V sub T squared over R, okay. So I'm going to say the mass, which was 0 0.15 kilograms, V sub T, which I just calculated to be 7.54 meters per second, and I'm going to square this, divided by my radius, which was 0 0.60 meters, and I'm going to then get my answer, and it's going to, let's see, let's figure this out. times mass times, oops, divided by, and I get 14.2. Now unit wise, I get kilograms, I've got meters squared, seconds squared, and then I have a meters down here, so meters cancels out. So that gives me kilograms, meters per second squared, Kilograms meters per second squared is the same thing as a Newton. So in other words, this person has to supply 14.2 Newtons of force in order to keep that ball spinning at that constant speed. Okay, now that's our first example. Um, I actually have four examples, so I'm probably going to get through one more example here and then I'll have to make a second video out of this. So let's go ahead and let's look at our second example. Okay. My second example now is a tetherball example. Now, I don't know how many of you have played tetherball before, but this is the pull and you hit the ball around and then the ball spins around the circle. And so we actually have kind of two things going on here, okay? We have, if I free body diagram this, the weight of the ball 
and we have some tensional force through the rope, okay? So that's how it connects. Now, the, the thing is, is it's going to rotate around the pole, like so, okay? And it makes an angle between the pole. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna look at this in terms of a triangle. So the angle between the pole, it says, is 20 degrees. And so I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna say, well, the angle to the horizontal is then 70 degrees, because again, they're complementary. Okay, remember everything has to add up to 180. So that gives me 90, 70, and 20 makes 180. So now, as this thing goes around, I look at this in terms of my free body diagram. I have one arrow going down and I have one arrow going up. And remember, we don't draw the, the um, net force in there as an arrow on our free body diagram. But I'm just going to switch color. And I'm going to say, well, there is a net force that keeps it moving in the rotation. And this is my centripetal force because the centripetal force is like a net force. Now, I used a different color which means that it's not part of the free body diagram. It's like when I used to draw in the force parallels and the force perpendiculars. Now, from my tensional force, my tensional force is at an angle. So if it's not on my x, y axis, I wanna start to look at this and say, well, maybe this, and, and I'm gonna go to another color here. Maybe this can be split up into component vectors, okay? So if this is split up into component vectors, this vector right here is going to be equal to the weight. So the vertical component is going to be equal to the weight, and then we have the x direction vector, okay? So the x component of the rope's tension is gonna be equal to my centripetal force, okay? And so that's kinda how I'm gonna look at this if I set this problem up, okay? So my force of tension in the x direction is going to be equal to my centripetal force, okay? So now, force of tension in the x direction, and, and essentially we wanna know what is the tension. So I'm gonna say force of tension in the x direction is equal to my mass times my V sub T squared over R, and I know my mass, my mass is 0.25 kilograms, and I know that my V sub T is 1.5 meters per second, and I'm going to square that, and I'm gonna divide that by my radius. Oh, I didn't give you a radius. Um, we'll just say it's half a meter, okay? So maybe it's half a meter away. Okay, so now we're gonna go through this and we're actually going to calculate it. So I'm gonna take my 0.25 times my 1.5 squared divided by my half a meter. And so I find out that, excuse me. I'm gonna have to pause this and come back because I'm just about out of time. Okay, hold on. 1.25 Newtons, okay? So I got like 40 seconds here. Now, that's what the force of tension is in the X direction, okay? I'm looking for the force of tension and so now I'm looking at this in terms of a triangle, okay? So the uh, cosine of the 70 degree angle is equal to the force of tension in the x direction over the force of, force of tension, okay? And so I'm going to then take my force of tension divided by set cosine of 70 